Okay, Joel went back again with uh, Songs of a True White Brother. I was talking about the Christ impulse and the other Christianity. Um, on my website, The Shapes in the Fire, you'll find links to a little Well, it's not a little, to a long essay uh, called The Natural Christian. And if you were to buy or look at a book that's also on the website, uh, you can read most of my stuff for free or you can read, uh, get books. You can get a little booklet, The Natural Christian, or you can get a, a book called New Wine, which is the product of my skilled activity. Uh, trying to say some things about Christianity and also about what we might call the Christ impulse, which is a, a universally human uh, impulse. You don't have to be of the Occident or the East. It's a potential of, of human nature. And um, we see it in all kinds of ways. We, we, we see it manifest on the political plane when... Uh, man stands in front of a tank in Tiananmen Square where he puts his own uh, life at risk in order to serve some uh, moral value which he feels uh, is more important than his life. Now, in The Natural Christian I talk a little bit about the science of psychology and the science of physics in relationship to ideas that one can have about the human mind or the human inwardness. Uh, just as an aside in my writings you'll find a reference to the idea that uh, this this term mind which we use in the West wasn't really always the way that, that people talked about human inwardness. There was a long tradition in Central Europe where they talked about spirit and soul and when Freud wrote his works he used the word uh, Geistes and Zeli Geistes is spirit and Celia's soul. And in a book by Brutal Benelheim, Benelheim uh, called Freud and Man's Soul, uh, Benelheim explains that when Freud was translated into English, uh, the words Geistes and spirit, or Geistes as, as, as spirit and Celia's soul, which Freud used, were, were not translated directly into the English word spirit and soul, they were translated into the English words mind. And of course already at that time uh, another sort of element of things had come into being which is that people out of science, and this was probably the reason this translation occurred the way it does, people working in the field of science uh, conceived of, of our inwardness as our mind and not only that, they conceived of it as uh, a consequence of our having a brain. Anatomy had proceeded to the point over many generations and hundreds of years where we knew there was this uh, bundle of nerve tissue in the human head and uh, when it got injured it was pretty clear people could be out of their mind and so it wasn't uh, a difficult thing in order to, to come to the conclusion that the there's a physical brain, a material brain, and the mind is a product of the physical brain. And we don't need the word spirit and soul anymore um, because we're all matter and not spirit. And in my book, The Natural Christian, I talk about that a little bit in terms of, of whether that's a viable way of thinking about the thing or not. Now, Again, remember when I use the words Christ or Christian here, I'm talking about the other Christianity. I'm not talking about uh, the Christianity which we're familiar with, the outer institutional religions with their multitude of incompatible belief systems. I'm talking about something that's knowable by the human being of himself in the same way that the East says that it's possible to know your Buddha nature. In the West we would say it's possible to know the Christ impulse in yourself. So once again we've come to you and uh, it is of course a, a problem 
in a lot of ways for us to uh, talk about these things uh, without getting confused or without people make assumptions, especially if we use the word Christ or Christianity or Christian or any of those derivatives because of what outer Christianity teaches. But in any event, uh, another way to talk about the natural Christian is to recognize that there are lots of people in the world today that, that say something like this, well, I'm spiritual but I'm not religious. And they make a distinction. Uh, they're aware of themselves as a person who tries to be moral. Uh, that is, they're aware of this Christ impulse in themselves. And at the same time, uh, they look at outer religion and they, and they can't relate to it. They can't identify that. They watch religious people and they don't think, I'm that. I'm not a religious person. I don't have a dogma or systems of belief that I run around screaming and demanding other people believe in. I don't go around knocking on people's doors like the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, or the Mormons trying to see whether or not I can convert people to my way of belief. I just try to be a moral person in my life. So I call that being spiritual. I don't say I'm religious. And that's what I'm talking about in this in this segment. I'm talking about that impulse in people, which is to uh, recognize in yourself uh, a spiritual or moral impulse that you try to bring into the world and uh, to distinguish that impulse from... Um, being religious in the typical kind of sense. Even people like Christopher Hitchens and uh, Sam Harris and the other sort of new atheists, uh, they aren't out there saying uh, there should be no morality. They aren't getting rid of religion because they don't want people to be moral or ethical. In fact, they, a lot of them, they try to build elaborate logical systems of morality. Uh, and that impulse is kind of interesting in a way because it basically says that, uh, well, we don't want a universal idea from a Christian religion, but we can have our atheist belief, and in our atheist belief we'll develop a logically rigorous set of moral principles that everybody ought to agree with. In a certain way, they end up with the same thing. They want universal moral rules that everybody should agree with, just the same way the religious people do. Now, this isn't true in every case. But it's true in a lot of cases if you just look at the phenomenon of modern life and the things that people say when they say I'm religious but I'm not spiritual and so on, and, or I'm spiritual but not religious. And of course uh, people um, having these different views come in contact with each other and they'll have conflicts. They will get into the political arena and they will start yelling and screaming at each other because they're, on a certain level, they're not interested in uh, understanding the other person, although that's very often a primary moral value in their system. Uh, Christianity has a teaching that's right that begins right in the Sermon on the Mount called the teaching of the mote and the beam, or the log and the splinter, where Christ says, well, hey, you're going to do that. You better not be a hypocrite. 